Hi, welcome to Watkins Glen International. I'm Tom Long. And I'm Andrew Carbonell. And we're here today with you at Mazda Motorsports Behind the Zoom to give you an in-depth look of what this track is like. It's one of my favorites. I'm really excited to share some of the tips and tricks around this track and give you a better understanding of just what it takes to get a perfect lap around this amazing circuit. So most cars here that you'll be in usually are braking around the 200 marker. And you want to keep in mind that this is a downhill brake zone. So as you brake at the 200 and we start looking down towards the apex, kind of realize how it does kind of bottom out and right at the apex kind of dips into a bowl and off to the exit. Another thing to keep in mind, the curbing is actually quite flat there. It's a two-step curbing, so it's actually usable for the first part, but you want to stay off the most inside part of it because it could unsettle a car possibly. So here we are at the apex of turn one. As you can see, the curbing has this two-step, as I was talking about. This first portion, you can be all over it. You actually want to try to be on it at all times. It gives you, you know, about two more feet of track at your apex. Now, you don't want to get to this piece. At this point, you could upset the car. Also want to look at how much camber we have here at the apex. And keep in mind, it does kind of flatten out at the exit. So you want to have the car pointed and already have your run going at this point because you are going to lose some of this grip there towards the exit of the corner. And to Andrew's point, at the exit, this starts our longest straightaway run all the way to what we'll find is the bus stop. In most cars, almost every car, unless you're in a big stock car, you're flat through the S's. And looking at our data traces in the Mazda prototype, it's actually a longer full throttle run than it is at Daytona. All right, the uphill S's at Watkins Glen, probably some of the most infamous corners in all of motorsports right here behind us. As you turn into here, you can see there is a lot of camber. Most cars, this is flat out, but it's very important to get the car placement right. There are some bumps and some different patches along the way. Depending on the kind of car you're in, it can really make it tricky. So here we are at the entrance to the bus stop. This is actually very similar to the S's down there. Car placement, right? That's what you want to think about as you come through here. You want to try to use this entire curbing. Idea being, once you get over it, now you're set up right side for the rest of the bus stop. Gives you a better angle to come back left, roll as much speed as you can. Yeah, and obviously, big braking zone. So one of your best passing opportunities on the track, come up down the back straight, in the draft, pull out to make a pass going into the bus stop. It can get a little dicey because it does get to single file here. So you gotta work with your, uh, your teammates out there and competitors. So here we are about midway through the bus stop. If you look back towards the entrance of it, where we spoke about using the whole curbing, that is a pure entry speed part. You don't want to get it slowed down before that and try to accelerate through that. That's all entry speed. You're actually carrying your speed up until this left-hand curbing. At this point, once the car sets up left and loads left is when you go back to throttle. That's when you know you've entered right, you've carried enough speed on the way in, and you're picking up the throttle for the perfect run out. Just something to keep in mind as you're exiting here, there is a lot of curbing to use. You just want to be very smooth and delicate with the curb use because it can upset the car if you use too much, especially if you're on and off the gas. The goal is always one input to throttle as you start to unwind, getting to another very exciting corner, turn five. Here we are in turn five, also known as the outer loop or the carousel. Big, long, high-speed corner, also full of um, lots of camber, banking. Big corner actually goes downhill from entry to exit, so you kind of want to keep this all in mind. You want to be very smooth with your hands, with your pedals, footwork, right? The way I like to drive this is, I like to drive in with as much speed as I possibly can, on the throttle, until the car starts to lose grip, usually front grip, if you have the right setup. At that point, you're just coming off the throttle just a bit, just so the front can set back down, keeping the, keeping the car about a car width off the bottom of the track, and at that point, right, you find your your balance and start working your way back to throttle, trying to squeeze as much throttle as you can to make a perfect exit all the way to the end. Okay, here we are, turn six, into the boot. Another high elevation, long duration corner. So eyes so critical to be looking around the corner. It is blind through the corner. So as you approach, you want to release the brake, let the car roll down the hill. Very easy to overslow the entry because it's intimidating and then squeeze the throttle smoothly as you unwind your hands at the exit. Okay, here we are in the entrance to turn seven, second part of the boot. It's also known as the toe of the boot. I like to call this like a, uh, a high-speed hairpin, right? Because it is the shape of a hairpin, but it also goes so far uphill that you're allowed to carry a bunch of speed in and allow the elevation to slow you down. So the idea is, how much speed can I carry into this hill 
and have the car slow down right in the middle to be able to get the run out without over slowing on entrance. It's very easy to over slow when you're not compensating for the elevation change. Okay, so here we can see how much elevation there actually is at the toe of the boot. Just look from where Andrew is at the apex to where I'm standing as we still are only midway through the corner to the exit. Just an incredible amount of uphill elevation as you gain grip. Seems like you climb many, many stories on the way out of the toe. Okay, the heel of the boot now. The bumpiest brake zone on the track. Remember, turn one was bumpy. This one's even bumpier, so very tricky because as you release that brake, if you don't do it smoothly, I always have a problem with the rear of the car coming around on the entry to this corner. You gain grip in the camber, and then you're chasing the rear. So really focus on a smooth brake release, maybe even if you have to brake early to settle the car and you can't see the exit yet. It is one of those long duration corners. To add to that brake release, you're very hard on the brakes. It's actually one of the slower corners on track. You've come from a few high speed corners. So now we get to the slow speed corner and it's very easy to mistime your hands. So one of the biggest things, you wanna be very slow with your initial input as we get to the compression, then adding your input all the way down to the bottom to get that late apex. Very easy to add too much input early on, early apex, and therefore it really hurts your exit. So here we are, turn nine, exit of the boot. Here's when you come back onto the main track. For you NASCAR fans, back to where we meet them, the NASCAR track. But here we are, it's kind of a tricky corner, mainly because it's blind. As you climb this hill, there really isn't much to see visually. So you kind of gotta have it, have it in your mind, be prepared on what you wanna do with your hands, with your feet, and all that. As you crest this hill, you wanna be gentle with the brake because the car will get light over the crest of the hill, could possibly lose the rear. It's also very easy to turn in too early, so you wanna be slow with your hands. If you turn in too early, as soon as you come over the hill and the car compresses again, you will early apex. So slow hands, so that once the car lands on the top of the hill, then you add your input and get your late apex to get the shot out of the corner. One other piece that, you know, is always a factor in a weekend is weather. And so a corner like this in every corner, we're always thinking about if it was to rain, where would the grip be? And it's usually not on the polished surface where most of the cars run. So this concrete patch is probably going to be very slippery. So what we like to do is actually drag our feet across the pavement and we can find that we actually pick up grip here on the very extreme inside before the apex and we'll probably find the same on the very extreme outside. So you might want to start to pick your battle plan as far as where you're going to place your car if it becomes wet. All right, here we are, turn 10. Coming from the boot, because you're not at full speed, you can really attack this corner. Probably don't need any brake. Any car I've been in didn't have to touch the brake here. Turning in about the 100 board and driving as much momentum as you can handle on the way down to the apex. Smooth hands always. To speak about your exit here, it's a very high speed corner which usually involves high consequences. There used to be high consequences, it used to be all grass followed by a wall or tire wall there at the end. Now they've actually paved the exit so you can, if you make any mistakes, you can actually use that, not to your advantage, but it'll help you avoid any larger mistakes than you've already made. Here we are in turn 11, sitting just past the apex, but this is also a very high speed corner, very similar to 10. In 10 it was just a lift, here in 11 it'll be a little brush of the brake. It's just, a, just enough to set the weight on the front of the car to get it to bite. It's also a little bit of an early apex. We've got some cambers you can see, so you want to use that to your advantage and really be cautious not to overslow your car for the exit. Yeah, this is a tricky corner, especially I find that I overslow the entry because I want to get on that gas pedal, but it's amazing how much entry speed you can really carry into this corner and float on the way out. And here we are at Pit Inn. That concludes a lap at Watkins Glen International. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to check back at MazdaMotorsports.com behind the Zoom. I'm Tom Long. And I'm Andrew Carbonell. And we look forward to seeing you at another track real soon.